used by the Soviet military to tune communications equipment. So it's actually one of the only Soviet, well, the only synthesizers ever to actually have a military application. The, the way that this is all written is just too much fun. Because if you know Russian, none of this is in Russian. I, I've been interested in uh, Russian stuff for ages. I mean, some of the first music that I actually did, I did by taking short, shortwave radio broadcasts from Russia and then splicing it up in tapes. <laughs> been labeled as the largest collection of Soviet synthesizers in the United States. We started doing jam sessions in the aquarium because of the, the acoustics and the way that it sounds is just amazing. I'm the curator operations manager there, so it's my job basically to oversee animal husbandry and the animal operations there. So you pick the but fish? Yes. Seems like fish and synths are your two biggest interests. Pretty much, yeah. And I tie them together whenever I can. When you work with an animal for so long, you almost just kind of develop a connection with them. I mean, it's almost kind of like a little, I don't want to say a psychic connection, but it is sort of. You know, I can tell what's going on with them. I don't know if they know what's going on with me, but I can tell what's going on with them. If people don't see these animals, then how do you truly educate somebody on it? And there is a very big difference between a television show and the real life. And so these animals act as almost like an ambassador or an emissary to the wild. some sort of deeper connection between your love for music and your, your uh, fascination with fish? Whether there's, whether there's with my fascination for nature and period. Mm -hmm. And then yes, definitely. You know, I mean, my music is not necessarily what you would refer to as an acoustic style whatsoever. It's hard analog electronics. But that, it's that, I don't know how to, how to explain that. It is very difficult, but there is, there is definitely a direct connection between, you know, what I see in these animals swimming and what I see around me in the natural world to the music that I do. That's a very difficult question. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it's a valid one. But it's, it's, it's difficult to explain it. I mean, it's up here, I and mean, I, I, I can understand it, but explaining it, it's kind of hard. I think you can communicate with fish, and I think a fish communicate with you. It, the, the, the difficulty of that is that what they may be communicating to you is what you will never see. You won't notice it. And because they're, they're not a person. We perceive things totally different than they perceive things. For instance, the, those electric eels, they, do, they barely can see. They don't even really, 
see their surroundings. But yet, in that brain of theirs, they're taking all of these electrical signals that they're putting out, and they're building a complex map of their environment in their head. So they're seeing something that it would be impossible for us to ever understand or even to come close to. I mean, it's, it's, it's like an alien civilization coming here and trying to communicate with us. We, we, we might not even know that they were communicating. 